Hello and welcome to Hukalo TV. Today is Saturday, June 3rd. It's a little after 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We're off to a bit of a late start due to some technical, technical difficulties. We don't have a camera for our guest speaker, but uh, I am very grateful that we have Karen Newman channeling for us today. She's a medium and a Reiki master. And uh, uh, Karen, why don't you add a little bit more than I remember? <laughs> <laughs> um, I channel my, uh, in principle, the an aspect of my higher self uh, called Theos. Um, Theos is three energies that are part of my <clears throat> oversoul, and I've been talking to them my entire life since I was about seven years old, six or seven, and I started channeling them somewhere around 2011, 2012, where I actually started channeling them. So, and you also have a radio program, I believe? I do have a radio program. I'm on hold for a little bit. I've had a radio program called About Oneness for the last couple of years. Um, the radio station is moving, so we're uh, in a hold pattern. Um, but yes, I have a radio show that's generally on Tuesday nights. And I do private readings and sessions as well as mediumship readings and sessions. So, All yes. right. And Theos will answer pretty much any question you have. Um, they're not the most um, focused on uh, extraterrestrials, um, but they deal more with spiritual life questions. But if you have something that's burning, they can usually uh, have something to say about it. They will, they will check and find out and go find, give you, give you an answer. So, um, so that's it. So I hope everybody has questions and I'll just go into a, a little bit of a um, toning with um, the ohm. If you want to ohm, that's also good uh, to get everybody in the same space. And then, no, it's Theos, Angie, T-H-E-O-S, Theos. So, okay, I'm going to, uh, Angie had written a uh, uh, name. I don't know who Talos, but maybe that's somebody that she should channel. Um, okay, I'm going to just do my ohming. And it's really nice to be back in Gillo. I've missed everybody, and um, I pop in and watch uh, on YouTube a little bit, but I haven't been able to be in any of the webinars lately. So hopefully, uh, no, they're not inner earth beings. They're my higher self. So, okay. <laughs> okay, well, I keep, seeing Angie's, uh, I keep seeing Angie's questions. All right, I'm just going to go into a, a little bit of a trance by Oming, and then uh, they will generally identify themselves and okay i think we're going to all mute and own with you in, si in silence perfect. for the <laughs> <laughs> perfect okay Good afternoon. We are very pleased to be here with you today, here in Hukulo. And it's been a long time since we've spoken with you. We are Theos. We are. And we love you, each and every one of you. And we are so pleased to be here. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you. 
we would just like to jump right in with questions if people have them. There's been a lot of things going on in the world. It's been very topsy-turvy, very tumultuous, and the energy is moving very fast, and people can feel very disjointed. This is part of the process. It's to shake you and to wake you and drive you to action. Now is not the time to sit on your hands or wait to see what happens, but be part of the participation in the change and the action with your thought, with your deeds, with your positive attitude, with your love choices. That is the message now more than ever because the world, the universe, humanity, needs everyone to move, to act, to love. And with that, we would open the floor for questions. Okay, I believe Leela would like to take the first question. Thank you. Uh, I just started to uh, practice healing, mm -hmm. and uh, I was ascending uh, energy uh, connecting with a few uh, beings what i'm connected and i would like to get the confirmation because i'm a beginner in healing if it's possible for you to confirm if my energy went through or if anything i created we would like to ask you what are you feeling when you are putting forth your healing are you feeling anything? I, well, I feel the connection with the beings when I am when I am uh, meditating. So I am very busy during the meditation because I do mantras and uh, a lot on uh, several levels of meditation. I am active during the meditation, so I am like kind of active that I don't really. I'm feeling good. But you have experience within yourself of being in the meditation and being in the connection, and you're sure about your connection, are you not? Yes. Okay. I am sure about those people who are uh, uh, with me that is connected, but I would like to see a confirmation from other side if that is true, because I'm your a confirmation beginner. confirmation is your connection. If you had no connection... Oh be a different story oh. but you're telling us that you have ah. this connection and that is part of the healing what you want to be doing is channeling that energy and being the vessel where the energy can move through it's important to let you know that nobody actually does the healing but the universe uses you as a portal or as a channel to direct energy and you being willing to do that is all that's necessary. The fact that you are right, connected to the beings is really the confirmation that you're looking for. Trust that. So we would say to you, set your intention at the beginning of each meditation, at the beginning of each healing, that you would like to be as purified as possible in order to direct the energy where it needs to be to the people that it needs to go and to the places that it needs to go or to wherever, but that you're willing to serve in that capacity. And that's all that's really necessary. And do your meditations and make your connection and trust that your intention will be directed. You will start to have sensations within your body where you feel energy moving and you will become a little bit more astute at directing it but in the beginning the most important thing is the willingness the willingness to serve the willingness to honor the service because you don't do the healing it's not you it's that, you yes direct that's it. why we so yes that's why we, we humans are uh, like to have a confirmation because if I was doing the healing I would know 
<laughs> but because I am not doing, that's why I am asking for confirmation. Right. So, that's yes. the, that's so your the reason. Your confirmation is your connection. But you can also, in the connection to your guides and whomever you're connecting to, the beings you connect to, ask them to give you some confirmation for your own for your own satisfaction, if nothing else. Ask for sensation. All right. Ask for that. Right. Because but because the most important thing is that you don't ask externally for the confirmations, but that you get them internally. You're able to connect to your guides well enough to know that you're connected. So we also trust that you are able to connect to them and also ask for some confirmations. Karen mm -hmm. sees a dove when she connects to us. That was the confirmation we gave her when she was a little girl because she didn't know who she was speaking to or what it was all about. So she asked, how do I know every time I hear a voice in my head that, we're, that I'm talking to you? And we told her that we would show her a dove. And to this very day, we show her that same dove. But you can ask for something like that. So so that is very common for us humans to yes. want it, to have some signs. Okay. Yes, because That's there wonderful. is a veil for all of the energy. You don't always see all of the energy in the form of lights or waves because of the limitation of your physical eye. You can see some things, but not everything. So visual things that come into the psychic eye, into your third eye, you would work on uh, opening that, but a lot of that is given for your own benefit. But ask for whatever it is you want. You should ask okay. for it. Okay, thank you for the wonderful, thank you, you for your wonderful uh, instruction and advice, thank you. And thank you for using your intention to heal. The world needs healing. So thank you for that. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Sias. Hello. Can you hear me? With whom am I speaking? This is Angie. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, Angie. Hello. Um, well, it's uh, pleasant to connect to you. I'm having somewhat of a weird reality um, moment in this room where everything around me is spinning and I feel sufficiently grounded, yet the world seems to be spinning around me. Am I spinning or is everything else spinning? Or what is this warp all about? Are you spinning not, in your visual I'm, field or in the, or the feeling of your body? Is the room spinning that you can see it, or do you feel it spinning? And the whole world is spinning really fast. Do you feel it in nausea? No. No. Just um, have some, just a heightened sense of awareness of I'm in the moment. And Does it distress mm, you? No, it's just um, different. Uh, it's an it's a new experience. Um, just wondering, perhaps is, maybe it's your presence that has brought this on in my reality. I am I'm I am connected to many beings as well, so a uh, uh, twist in my reality at times. This is a little bit different, though. I feel Karen like it's speeding up. Karen has that too, and that is generally when she's moving between timelines and things right. spin and she feels disoriented and the room moves around a bit. It doesn't generally keep spinning for her. But let us tune into you and see. We didn't know if we would have a spinning sensation on you, what's possible. I have I have experienced spinning in astro and it does it, it speeds up your your 
your ascension or your growth process. But speeding up in reality, like if I go for a walk outside, the earth starts moving. I lose my balance. So I don't go outside often. Are you sure you don't have vertigo? No. You can, let's call it that because that's the best way we can describe it. But this is only since I've really woken up. And, you know, today I was just looking back and thinking, when did I wake up? And someone asked me, what, which wake up are you talking about? Are waking up, waking up this morning or waking up in your uh, spiritual life? And I could not remember even waking up this morning. And it's like I uh, uh, shifted into a totally new timeline. Uh, it's just an experience I'm sharing right now, I guess. Mm. <laughs> well, what we would say to you is this. For safety, for your mm. safety, it's best as you go and have your ears checked. Because it does to us sound more like vertigo than a spiritual experience we're not saying it's not and we're not saying that the result is not from a spiritual experience but it does sound a bit like vertigo and if you are unable have, to um, walk and function that is not in principle the best thing so it could be just an inner ear imbalance that could be yeah. exasperated by spiritual awakening I but at the same time, we do best as humans when we're able to walk across the room without falling down. So we would just say to you, right. <laughs> yeah, we love you. So we would just say to you, check your inner ear. Just go to the doctor. They can check your inner ear and make sure that you. you haven't been knocked a little bit off balance. We will say, though, that spinning is quite common now because everything is topsy-turvy and people who are awakened and aware are extra sensitive to the changes and they manifest in our physical being so sometimes we need the physical to assist our physical body and the physical being a doctor or someone who can who can help us with that because it knocks us off. It knocks us out of balance. It's like right. your body speeds up to such a degree that it makes yeah. your physical body go a little bit wonky. So please just get that checked and get back in balance because we need you walking <laughs> around. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for that. You're thank welcome. you. <laughs> Thanks. I don't have another question. Oh, Let someone else go. It was interesting. Thank you. We will tell you that when Karen wakes up sometimes in the middle of the night and she hasn't slept enough, the room mm -hmm. goes spinning. And she's had to lay on her bed holding on, thinking she was literally going to fall off. Right, yeah. I've so, done that before, but I have so, fallen off. Well, you, you, you went one step further than she did. But it is also, too, really, when she jumps timelines, she experiences a vertigo type of feeling. And she does have to hold on because what's happening is the molecules and the entire being is shifting, wrenching sort of experience. She talked about it yesterday with Takur. Just a little bit. Yes, I was there. I heard so, yes. And and Chakur confirmed that that things are moving quite quite sporadically. So I I don't think that you are the only one experiencing. Good. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you so much. Very nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> so Who's next? I don't see anybody in the queue. <laughs> oh, Michelle? Yeah, oh, yeah. there you are. Sorry. Go ahead. Hi, Theos. I guess I just really wanted to like connect energy with you. It's been an, a long time. 
It has been a long time. So I wanted to say much love to you. Oh, much love to you. And um, so I don't know if I if you want to if you do this um, just to my heart and give me a message, or um, or I could ask the question. We want What's to ask you why are you what is happening with your painting? My painting. Because, yes, we see you with lots of paintbrushes and pens and pencils and drawing instruments, but not using them as you used to. Um well, I was just drawing yesterday and all weekend or ever <laughs> that I don't, the first so, time in a long time. No, really pick paper and pen. Yeah, I don't devote a lot of time. I fit it into when I can. Okay. So we would like to say to you that's very much part of your expression. And if you feel that you're not expressing as much as you should, it's because you're not utilizing that creative part of yourself. That is a good outlet for you. It is. So. I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to go ahead and ask a, like a general question for people. Uh, um, there's a when there are people who have a, are stuck in their story and they go circular and you can't like I am a, as a witness to it. Like I, I've been around two people or more than that in the last day where they talk about a story in their head and they're on a loop. They just keep repeating themselves in a in a circle in a circle. So here's my story in a circle. Here's it again, but here's it again, but here's it again. He drives that kind of um, self uh, harming ideas. Um, and some I was told that's like demonic kind of energy, but I don't know if that's accurate. Or negative and and not, not not demonic, but negative entities. Well, everything is really a manifestation of us, and thought forms and entities are no not separate from us in any way. Right. We will say that we believe you're talking about your friend that you are currently staying with. <coughs> Yeah, that happened with him, but also with the woman I went to a, a meditation camp with. Okay. Things have manifestation. Yes. Depending on where they are within the hierarchy of the universe, for just to be simple. Okay. There are demons, there are negative energies, just as there are angels and positive energies. They're yes. all part of the fabric of what is. Mm -hmm. And like energy draws like energy. Yeah. And spiraling energy, if you visualize a spiral, it has a sort of web. And that can be positive and that can also be negative. But if you think about negative spiraling energy, that, uh -huh. has, that has sort of a web structure, it can pick up thought forms and attachments. Yes. Whether they're demons or discarnate spirits or anything really that would be like energy. But that right. energy becomes amplified. Yes. The more that person stays within that spiral. And every thought form and energy has its own energy that it is adding to that web. Right. Therefore, the voices come and the, I would say, jeering and negative right. thoughts compounding upon each other. Right. For some people, it's as simple as removing them, but other people hold on to them mm -hmm. because it's what they know. 
Correct. So what particularly is your question? You asked... Well, I wanted to know the mechanics behind it to see if that was accurate. If it is more of a construct of your own mind attacking itself or if it is outside, like... It's all energy. of those things. Okay, it's all of those things. So, I, mean, I as a person who do not want to... I don't want to sit and listen to the circle of doom. But about anybody's all story about why they're in this treachery or whatever. Mm. Like... I want to hear them and comfort them, but then I want them to like comprehend that they keep talking in a circle, right? And that's difficult, <laughs> except I do, and I literally say, so you've told me this like 15 times now, you keep talking in circles. Is, is there a better way or an, an effective way? What is a, what is a good idea in having a discussion where to help someone see, oh, I'm like have a negative loop and it won't let go or is it just not my business? <laughs> well, Maybe because if I just, because if I just, I'm we we would like to say something now. Yes. Um, the expectation that you're going to talk this person through this may or may not be truly realistic. Right. <laughs> this is an ongoing process. Right. If this irritates you, don't participate. Yes. Because the question really isn't so much what you're asking is how to help this person. You're basically asking how not to be annoyed by the situation. It's and not, I mean, I'm used to the situation, but here's the thing. What I, what I want, I feel in my, in, okay, so my intuitive sense is, so if you do not want to have this experience, you step away. And then I have this other part of my brain that says, hey, Michelle, you're a healer. You're supposed to be a helper buddy to people. So, like, why, why do you want to back away from something just because it's difficult? We would just say to you that. It's not about you, really. Right. Like you're making a lot of this about you and okay. about your, your feeling about the situation. You have a person who is in their own experience, in their own world, and they're a little bit stuck because they've built a web of a spiral around them. Uh -huh. And it's very hard for them to see over it. It's yeah. not a one, in this instance, it's not a one word, one answer, one sentence proposition. This is an ongoing, this is an ongoing issue. Yes. And much of it has to do with the, the imbalance of the chemicals within the body. Oh, okay. As well as the, the holding on to this negativity. But it, it compounds itself over and over again. What we would like you to say to this person is to ask them, what is it that they need? Mm -hmm. What do you need? Right. What, that's, the, that's the question. It's not you giving some magic word and, and then boom, they're okay. Or by, because they're in a spiral and it's, they're speaking out what they're experiencing. Right. They're as much an observer of their experience as a narrator of it. Yes. So much of the time, they can't hear you. Yes. Because they're too busy experiencing what they're experiencing. And that yes. has nothing to do with you. Yeah, I don't. I know so it does. The question to ask them when they do have a moment of clarity is, what is it that you need? Right. What will make this better for you? And if they say nothing, mm -hmm. then for the moment, that's the answer. Yeah. You can just say, when you know what you need, I'm here for you. Right. If it becomes a medical situation or an emergency, then you need to take steps to get them help. But if this is just a sort of rooming ongoing conversation ask them really what they need what will 
help them in that moment. And for the rest, maybe it's best not to engage in the conversation if it causes you distress. Well, they're yeah, having I mean, their I own distress. They're having their own experience. So yeah, we wouldn't get into the thing of oh, I'm this healer because no, you're not the healer. Right. The universe is the healer. Yeah, I know. So okay. maybe you would be able to direct the energy, or maybe you wouldn't. But the intention has to be to give that person what they need, not to fix yeah. them so that they stop talking so much. Not like that, but what I, I have had been of the mind that I do not even send energy at all because unless he actually requests it. And because it just seems like I don't know his soul's journey. But I'm not even just talking about him. I was just talking about people in general. Well, so I don't, everyone, I don't the, the question would be, what do you need? Okay. My question to you is, what do you need? What do you, Michelle, need? What will help okay. you? <laughs> All right. No, it's not a rhetorical question. It's a real question. What do I need? I need a break. Then take a break. Yeah, I'm going to go do it. All right. You're always fun, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I love it. We love you. I love you. Are there any other questions? I'd like to read a few from the YouTube chat. People couldn't join us in person. Um, there are two questions in that chat. Uh, one from someone whose handle is firstborn, asking if there are any uh, messages for him or her. We prefer then just asking for if there's a message for a specific question. There's okay. all kinds of messages always. Then um, there's a, a question from Tracy Hunter. She asks, is there any way to determine who or what is sending me downloads that I'm getting? Getting lots, just not sure where they are coming from or what they are doing. We would first say the best thing to do was for her to ask. We are very much a proponent of first asking internally before you only ask externally because if you are able to get the download you're also able to get the information if you don't want the information then you should take steps to not receive it or if it's not information that you truly want to experience for whatever reason then you should cut it off but we would say before you accept a download you should understand and know from whom it comes so First, we would say to you, ask the question, is this person able to respond now? Or are they in They're probably YouTube? on a delay on YouTube, so it may okay. take them a while to type and something. And the person's name is Tracy? Tracy Hunter, yes. OK, we would just give us one moment, because we're going to look at Tracy's view. We hear that she's getting downloads from, and this is not something we generally talk about, but we would say that she is getting some downloads from uh, the Lyrans. That is what comes to, to mind. But we would also say that she needs to inquire as to who. But we definitely get some Liran energy. And there's a very important uh, reason why it's coming from them. It's important for her to discover her connection to the Lirans. So, But she really needs to do that for herself. And she can go into meditation. And when she starts to get a download, she should just stop it and say, excuse me, but who are you? And why are you telling me these things? and not really rely too much on external. If she's able to get the download, she's also able to get the information. 
Thank you very much. Uh, next, I believe we have a question from the person with the handle King of Kings. Mm. King of Kings. Can you unmute? With the hermetic symbols. We're hearing background noise, but no voice. He's muted again. Oh, thank you. Um, well, let me read a YouTube question while he checks or he or she checks the microphone. Uh, there's another person in YouTube, a Jess M, who has the question, what or who was the powerful ringing in my left ear just this morning? Also, how can I recall my astral experiences specifically how my case is going in the Pleiadian court. Much love. The ringing in your ears is really when uh, you are, it's not the wives tale of someone is talking about you, but in principle, it is the situation of you are being tapped to, to sort of wake up and pay attention. And that would be coming from your guides there's some information that you need to be aware of. And when you get that, it's sort of a tap on the shoulder and you can just say, what is it that I need to be listening to or be aware of? And that will happen. The more you become aware, it will, it will happen more and more and it will bring you to attention so that you can know. Right now, we believe it's more of a testing, like testing one, two, three, are you paying attention? So Hello? just... Hello. So Can we'll just finish this slide. Yes, just one moment. So when you get the ringing in your ear, it's more of a, it's, it's a reaching out to you to get your attention. But the beings that want to get your attention aren't going to be talking to you where you don't get to interact with them. So once you start to get that sort of tap on your shoulder, ask what they want you to know and introduce yourself and ask, of course, for them to introduce themselves to you. So that's our answer. <laughs> King of Kings. Uh, I think we're ready for the next question then. That was the King of Kings, I believe. Yes, I think we're waiting for him to unmute. We're good now? Yes. Yes. It's greeting. Um, greeting. I'm drawing kind of late. Who am I speaking to? We are Theos. Theos. Am I, um, do I have any connections to Theos? Is it a collective or a person? Theos is the higher self of Karen. They are, we are, we should say. We are beings that exist. We are. We are not incarnated in any physical form. But we are part of the oversoul of Karen. But what is your question about connection? Um, um, am I connected to you because I felt like a kind of connection? Where does the name King of Kings come from? Oh, my name is Den I L. Everyone is connected. Whether there's a direct connection or not, we cannot say at this time. Um, but we are all connected. If you feel a connection, then there probably is one. But that's for you any, to explore. Is there any beings that are connected to me? You have any messages for me? One moment. You deal with a lot of beings that are, we would say, more neutral than good or bad. And we do feel a lot of energy around you that has to do with, mm, how, what would it be called? They would be more in the realm of uh, 
advisors and teachers. And we, you do have sort of mentors or guides that are around you. We get some very, very strong medieval energies that are more along the lines of monks or hermits. And we see that your direction is to really study this kind of text and this kind of information because in there you will find your connections more. But we see quite 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 some quite some teachers around you. Okay. We're looking at energies from the years 1400 and this sort of medieval time period. See. Mm. So I need to study more focus on the, that, those time periods of um, mystics and monks and yes. people like that. Yes. Is yes. there any names that come in from any of them? The book that we recommend that you study just popped into our vision is the book of Abramalin, the mage. Yes, I do. That I do. Is, I have that. You when have when that book? Winter, yes, but I haven't went through it for a while, so I have to go back to it. That book has very strong teachings for you. See. Hmm. And we do have, we see very strongly monks around you, whether that is a past life energy coming forward as a guide to you or a separate one, we don't know. But that is really your era that you should be focused on now. Learn about that. See. Learn everything about it. Because from there, you'll gain your knowledge. How, how is my um my energy feel? Is it my chakra system okay? Anything needs in like balancing right now? Am I your perspective? Do you not know if your energy is good? Well, I know it's good, but I just want to. It's always good to get a doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we believe your energy is good. We think that you. Uh, hmm. We think you could spend more time in a sort of thankful meditation as opposed to a power-driven meditation. Si. We would ask that you spend a little bit more time in, for lack of a better word, worship than in wielding of will. Si. Si. Do you understand what we mean? Yes. Worship in a sense, what do you mean by worship? Thankfulness, appreciation, love. Connecting to love energy, expanding your heart, bringing in light. Connecting with your holy guardian angel, just like a Brahman talks about. Okay. Mm -hmm. It will give you a wider perspective and it will give you the criteria from which you make all your choices. Be well-rounded and be open to all things. You have never to shut the door on light or darkness, but stand in the light and see everything brighter see. and from that perspective. You can explore darkness. There's no problem with that. But do it from the light. See. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Can I ask one more quick question? You may ask as many questions as you want. I had a dream a couple of days ago and it's like 
in the dream, it was like there was a guy, it's like a black suit guy, talking to him, with, and he was telling me about he was gonna for some woman or something. There was, and a, then I started. To I hear you? There was a guy in a black suit. A, a, okay. And he was and going. I was going up stairs. Go for somebody, and I was going up stairs, like to go be the person before they could get to the person. And a military guy appeared out of nowhere in the middle of my dream. So mm -hmm. it's like I just grabbed his weapon, and we were struggling with the weapon. I'm like, "What are you doing in my dream?" And I just came out of it. So I was kind of going on what that was about, in a sense. Well, on a dream interpretation way, it's about standing up to authority, but authority being thrust in that is inappropriate. See. So you are doing something to help someone and yet being prevented by the very energies that are supposed to be helping. Everyone in this time is being tested to stand on their own, to stand for what's right, regardless of what the new definition of right has become. We have to know in our souls what real right is, as opposed to what is now being redefined as correct or redefined as acceptable. And that's what it's going to be about. At your own risk. Okay. At your own risk sometimes. So stand don't, for what is right. So don't be afraid to stand for what is right. Stand for what is right. Stand for what is right because it's right. Okay. Not because of the risk. In the biggest perspective of everything, we are just blips. In time. in time and our journey is sometimes long and sometimes short in truth it's very short but we have to take actions based on what is truly right for the larger perspective of everything especially now when there is so much at stake so this dream is not saying you will do that but it's reaffirming within yourself that you know you could and that you would choose that. You would choose it. And you are quite right to say, what are you doing in my dream? What are you doing in my reality? And it's about taking back your own reality. So everyone has to stand for what's right now more than ever because there's much more at stake than there ever has been in the largest perspective. And it doesn't have to be dramatic, but it, it is important to teach your children to stand up for your fellow man, because there are people in our dream that shouldn't be there now, and taking liberties that shouldn't be taken. But that is also part of the lesson for us to stand up and reaffirm what we really want for the world and for ourselves and for our future. The future is not in the future. The future is made today. We create it now. It manifests a little bit later. So whatever we want, we have to stand for, regardless of what's happening around us. We will come to the place where we want to be, but things went a little bit wonky in the last period of time. So I hope that answers your question. Did I crash? No, Dan's just been muted because of feedback. If he wants to unmute and indicate he's done, that would be great. If we don't hear from Dan in a second. The next person in the queue is Dawes. Oh, there he is, Dan. I feel that's a little bit heavy, but we feel very strongly that needs to be said. Hello? Hello. Oh, yes. Um, before we close, um, 
Is there any upper healing modality we could use to help amplify the healing on the planet and balance the timelines right now that you could recommend for the group? As yes, yes. Very much Very within much nature. Within nature. We need in, in ways we really need to do a sort of Lord of the Rings experience where we call upon nature to realign itself and to help nature realign and to acknowledge those forces, those deep, ancient energies that have been forgotten and ignored. They need to be re-aligned into their proper places. So whatever you do within healing, it should be done within nature. On the ground, feet on the ground, hands in the water, touching wood, using the elements, truly experience thing and breathing them, breathing the air, using that air to make your intention with your feet firmly in the ground, through fire, through the elements, through spirit. That's the healing modality that needs to be used. It can be done via Reiki, but Reiki is just energy with intention. So whatever modality appeals to you, use it with the elements in mind and truly honor the earth, honor the air, honor the water, honor the directions, honor the sun, the moon, the stars, and ask to be brought into true alignment and communication with them and ask for that direction. Ask what the earth needs. Just like Michelle was asking, what do I do to heal this person in a spiral? The earth is in a spiral. The world is in a spiral and the spiral creates a web of energy around it and it pulls more and more like energies to it that amplify each other. We need to create a positive spiral that also creates a web that draws more and more positive energies to it. And that will be done with connections to nature, connection to Gaia, and all of the elements that are here. They're here, they're tools with us. The trees are our friends. The trees are our tools as well. The animals, the birds, the insects, the butterflies connect to nature and ask the world what it needs maybe nature wants you to go out and stand next to a tree and use that tree root system that crosses the entire planet to send messages of hope and love and healing call to the gods of the sky call to the gods of the directions be bold in your intention. Find others who will join you. Be one with our world and create a ripple and then a tidal wave of love. but stand. That's our answer. Thank you. I think we'll move on to Don's question next. Don, if you can unmute. Don, we hear a hum, but nothing else. Is there a mic problem? Well, that's me. Uh, no, we're trying to speak to Don now. He's next in the queue. No, not you. We love Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. 
Um, well, maybe while Don's checking his mic, uh, says, we could... Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, wonderful. Thank you. Okay, my question was, um, I placed six Metatronic cubes uh, filters in direct alignment with the planet Earth, uh, spaced at 24-hour intervals. I'm using them as light filters to uh, filter out the residue from Antarctica. I just want to know if this is an effective procedure, please. We would say yes, but we would say multiply that as well. Are you doing this literally or psychically? I'm using visualization. Okay. In your visualization, I multiply those cubes. Okay, I placed six of them. Six yes. of them. Uh, shall I do the whole 365? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And, 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 and we would like to say, see them and yes. maybe program them to replicate, duplicate, and multiply within cube within cube. Understood. Program them for the sacred geometry that will replicate infinite yes. shapes because the energy that they must absorb is great. Yes. So, and ask for assistance from beings to monitor them. We would <clears throat> feel very strongly to say to you, ask for whatever beings you feel connected to, whether it's angels or energies, ask for those cubes to be you're having a problem finding them, to be monitored and to be maintained mm -hmm. at all times. Thank so you, set up set up a system where it's an ongoing observation and an ongoing maintenance of those cubes. But the work is necessary and we thank you for your foresight and taking action. I'm you also, are not alone. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. I was following the directions of Ish from last last week, I believe it was. Um, I've also we would been, also we would also say to you too, sir. Excuse us. Go ahead. We would also say to you too that the ice crystals are also connected to the oceans, of course, mm -hmm. because of the water crystallization. And anything that you can use water-wise, not only uh, psychically, but physically, mm -hmm. you, if you can tone towards water and put things in the water, mm -hmm. will also be very effective. Look at a map and pick the oceans and surround the area as well that it's not only on the outside of the earth, but on the inside of the earth and using the connectivity because the water is all, of course, connected with the with its molecules and whether it's in crystalline ice form or liquid or gas. Mm -hmm. But if you put that, those into the, into the water and into the molecules of the hydrogen and oxygen, it will also travel very quickly and can be amplified very fast. Think in terms of nano. I know nano. Think know, in terms of nano. I know nano, nano very much. There you go. Um, this is cellular and this is molecular and this is atoms and neutrons and electrons and nano. Um, I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Uh, you go, go ahead. Question. <laughs> uh, uh, no, you might as well move on. I just forgot what I was going to say. If you remember, come back. I will. Thank you. Thank you. I believe Stephanie is next. Stephanie, can you unmute? I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Hello? Yes, we do. Okay, yes. good. 
Hi, Theo. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having us with you today. I have been, uh, well, I have some questions about crystals and energy and programming. Are you, um, uh, would you, are you able to address those? Or? Yes, we will try. Oh, thank you. And we think you <laughs> should you. join with Dawn, but go ahead. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, I've recently been buying crystals and stones as gifts. And before I give them, I wash them and I sage them. I was just wondering if um, that was, I guess if that was okay or if that's something I should leave for them to do. And then a second part of that is regarding programming. How do you really program a stone for you personally? Thank you. You can wash them and sage them. It's always kind to do. It's it's really down to the belief system of the person who's dealing with the crystal, whether or not they think that your mojo will end up in their crystal. Maybe they want your mojo. But crystals are vast storehouses of knowledge and information. So to have a clean crystal that really doesn't have a lot in it, it would need to be cleaned. And if it's handed over straight away, it's not really going to have a lot of stuff in it. Just if you program it with your intention of goodness and love and whatever it is that you program it with, hopefully within the lines of that, then there's no problem. Some things are just really sort of superstition, but if you believe it, it's true. So. So we would say, if you feel guided and you have a purpose for the crystal, then by all means program it. But inform the person that you give it to of that intent of that programming so they don't wash it and get rid of all of your good intention. Well, I don't really want to, to give them or, you know, programmed with something I've intended. I'd like them to customize it for themselves. Well, then, the programming just clean it fun. then. Okay. If you want. I'd like, yes. Just clean um, it. Then but, but I would I would say to you, and, and when we say we, and then when we say I, because there's three of us, one of us has a very strong uh, opinion, so... We are the T of the Theos, we will say. Um, when, you, when you get a crystal, everyone's so concerned about cleaning it. But crystals are vast storehouses of knowledge, always. So in order to even be a crystal, to have been formed in hard rock and grown have you ever grown sugar into crystal and watched it form in its matrix? But in order to be a crystal, you've been around a long, long time. And everyone is so interested in cleaning the crystal without even asking the crystal what it knows or what it has to teach. So we would be less inclined to tell you to clean the crystal than to really learn from it, whatever it knows. Yes, I've, I've done that. Um, probably not real consistently, but I've done that several times. But do that times with everything. Now. Do that with everything. Okay. Ask the crystal why it came into your hands. So much oh, of the time okay. we think we're exhibiting our will, but will goes both ways. That crystal might have picked you. <laughs> that, we like are very that. serious about that. We think that we are the ones driving the boat, but sometimes the boat is being co-piloted. So respect is, is really the the term we would like to 
convey. Respect the crystal. What its job is, is to hold information, to conduct information. So be aware of that. Respect Great, thank it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll be more mind, mindful of that. And then one last question. Um, sure. It's more, more personal. I guess you can answer it generally if you'd like. If there are uh, any spiritual, excuse me, physical things that may be um, affecting my spiritual aspect. Any physical In what health way? Line, health line. In what way? Uh, um, I'm not sure how to rephrase that. Let me try it again. If there okay. is anything that's going on with me physically, whether energetically, um, medically, or chakra-wise, that may um, be keeping my spiritual, uh, or not keeping my spiritual self from going, but may um, be addressed to help uh, support my spiritual growth and development. In an understandable format. <laughs> okay. Um, or you can just read me and, and tell me what you Well, we want to say to you that the, the optimum thing is to take as perfectly good care of yourself as you can. And we keep coming back to this washing, and we're going to play with you a little bit on it, but wash yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally as much as you do the crystal because you are a storage house of information and you need to be as clean and tidy and healthy as possible. So take care for what you eat. Make sure that you move. Make sure that you are not ingesting things that are damaging your physical form. You're not as resilient as a crystal and you definitely won't last as long in your physical body. Your soul will last forever. So take care okay. for yourself. And we know, you know, sugar is also crystal. So, but sugars are like swallowing little tiny daggers that pinch away at your system. And we feel that you've taken too much sugar. That's what we hear. So I, I maybe, think that sounds right to me. <laughs> so we would say to you, drop that crystal clean yourself of that one because there's a difference between sugar and we're talking about white sugar that has been purified and stripped of all of the nice things that you have when you have like molasses or something in its pure form in a fruit form where it has the fiber that goes along with it that can be quite destructive to you so especially you um, because of sensitivity, it dulls your sensitivity. And if you want to talk about something dulling humanity, it's our attachment to this, these little white. We want to really say that they really are like little tiny daggers that pound away at, at your being. So do what you can to take in less of that and more natural things. Because it began okay. connecting back to nature and cleaning yourself on the inside is what will help you develop spiritually. It's not that you won't develop. We don't want to say like you're not developing. Of course you are. But if you want to have that, it, it's a different feeling when you are clean. And, and we don't want to say it as a, is a purity of good and bad, but clean within yourself, clean within your being, and not bogged down or, or fogged over by chemicals in your body that mask your ability to feel. So, right, thank you. That's thank what we would work that. on yeah. first. That's what we would work on yeah. first. Yeah. I've, I've tried that once before, and I know it, it, it made such a difference. It took me about three days. Really, it was like trying to. Like if, if you were a smoker or a drinker, it was really like three days of um, with, withdrawal. Withdrawal before, right? Sugar before I started because to what be it does to... is it stimulates 
part of your brain that feels pleasure. But it's also affects your physical form. Too much of a good thing is too much of a good thing. And it has been everything in its natural form, not everything, but most things in their natural form have a balance. And this is just sort of heroin. It goes right to the brain, right through your, right through all the barriers of your, of your brain and straight to the pleasure sensor. Sensor. We don't know the word sensory system so i understand and it builds and it compounds itself so the less you take of that the better for you and the more clear you will feel and you won't feel like maybe i'm not making progress because i i can't feel it you'll be able to feel more thank you that's all i have i appreciate you very much we appreciate you too thank you Greetings, Theos. This is Christine. Hello, Christine. How are you? Um, <laughs> well, now I'm filled with a lot of joy because um, of what you said about the crystals picking us. Um, mm. I started a small collection of um, skulls, mm. and it is so wonderful to know that they chose me because I believe that. We know they choose. We know very much. And if you ask Karen, she has skulls that chose her but refused to talk to her. So she knows very well, much what you're talking about. I, I don't know if mine talk to me. If they do, uh, I, I don't know. But I also have um, animals um, carved in crystals, which um, every now and then I'll gather them all, the skulls and the animals and I'll put them on a chair, and I will put um, selenite in the center to energize them or to connect them, or and then I put them back into crystal grids at the end of the day where they're dedicated to something. Like right now, I have, for this problem that we have with in Antarct Antarctic Antarctica, um, I have a globe, and then I have some of the crystal skulls around it trying to give energy or, because as you said, I, since I don't, I can't hear them, I'm thinking that this is what they're supposed to be doing. Does that sound Just, right? It sounds absolutely right. We would say you may not hear them audibly, but yeah. follow your impulse. If that's what you feel that she should be doing. And that's what we said to uh, King of Kings, ask what the earth needs and what it wants, and you will get the impulse to do it. So whatever it is, the modality is individual. The modality will be on the tools that you have, whether it's just what you have around you in your house, in your garden, or what you have in your physical body. It, we would only say to you, with the selenite, it would be very good if you can do it outside or bring in a, a, a cup of dirt and you put the selenite in the dirt. Okay. Because it does send that energy also through the planet and, and okay. also to the, because there's such a connection. We, you have the element of of stone of, of a solid you need you need to involve the other elements when you speak your intention you're using breath we would use a cup of water there we would okay. uh, do it in the sun for the fire but we would also have the earth there the earth is what needs to be healed so you need to represent these physicalities with actual representations of earth wind fire water spirit in the intention but your spirit is what is directing you to know what to do this is why you say i'm just doing this i don't know why well the reason why is because that's what the earth is telling you to do that's what your spirit is telling you so trust it okay. go for it use okay. as much of the elements as you can okay so um 
for oh, fire. We want to also say, we also just want to say, with it, with every element that exists, there's also an energy of that element. Honor that energy of the element. Call to that energy. Make the declaration. I call to the earth, represented here by the ground, that gives the life to the worms and to our plants and is the conductor of the water that holds the roots of our plants into the ground. I call to the, the energy of that and ask for that energy to come forward and be present and to also honor your work. Explain that okay. you're doing this work. This is what I was talking about, about reconnecting to the energies of the planet and to the world. We have okay. to have that connection to speak. Just in the movie with Pocahontas, listening to the, the voice of the wind, we, we need that. This is for, the time. Uh, okay. For um, fire, could I um, have a candle in of place of the... Okay. And then for the wind, if I opened a window... <laughs> of course. Yes. And your window. breath is also wind. Blow. Oh, that's the first thought that I had, blowing on it. Okay. Okay. Cool. My birds agree, too. Yes. <laughs> and use the birds. Cool. Call to the energy of your birds. Call to their, oh, yeah. to their song. Ask for their song to be a song of healing, to be a song of joy and unity. Speak to them. Oh. Everything okay. around us is connected to us. The more aware yes. we are, of its true connection and to its part of this Gaia, then the better it is, the better it works, the stronger it is. Thank you. Do it with joy. It makes me feel really good. I'm on the, I'm on the path. <laughs> you are on the path. And Thank whatever you. you feel inspired to do, whether it's dancing around, creating energy, oh. or pounding a drum, or whatever playing music, whatever it is that brings up that energy and solidifies it. And then when you are done, thank, thank the energies for participating with you and for honoring your intention. Okay. And bless everything. Okay. I think I'm ready. You're ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Okay, next, uh, I would like to read a question from the uh, YouTube queue. Uh, Lori B. asks if you can uh, give her a, a description of the left. As opposed to the right. She said you would know what she meant by left. <laughs> we know what we think that we know about the left. We don't know if we know what she means, but we will tell her what we think she means. When you're talking about the left path and the right path, the left-handed path, the right-handed path, you're talking about a observance of intention and one being the right-handed path would be more of honoring and asking and doing things in harmony and the left hand would be wielding and, and asserting and issuing will. Within that, there is sometimes chaos. Within the right, it's much more ordered. Both are fine. You can walk either path, but it's best to walk in the middle it's best to observe both and be affected by neither. We tend to lean a little to the right. The fascination with the left is a healthy curiosity. The world has enough left at the moment though we would say the right needs to be shored up. The left is much more aggressive than the right. So find the balance is what we would say. Find the balance. 
utilize the strength of the left to implore the right, employ the right. That's all we're really going to say. She knows the answer. It's more of a test for me if I know the answer. We, Theos, know the answer. Okay, Pete is next. Hello. Hello. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, not very well, though. Okay. Um, I think, thank you so much. Um, my now I really can't hear. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, my first We don't hear the question. We don't hear. Um, Pete, I'm going to skip you and come back in a second. You can either type your question or um, fix your mic. I'm going to read a, um, uh, uh, another YouTube question. Uh, Jess uh, had the second part of the question he asked earlier. Uh, he'd like to know if you can tell him anything about a case he has going in the Pleiadian court. No. Okay. We cannot. Pete, That's more can, of a question for Chakur. Okay. Pete, can you um, <clears throat> uh, type your question or um, try your mic again? Okay. We're getting a lot of background hiss and hum and not any voice. Hello. That's a little better. We're getting echo, but we can hear you. Hello. Okay. Now, I think we're to type your question. Pete will ask for you. In the meantime, Don, would you like to uh, unmute and uh, follow you and have your follow up question? Don, are you ready? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. okay. I was wondering if I could basically reset the axis of the Earth to true per perpendicular to the sun, in relation to the sun uh, by the gentle application of emborium, which is uh, which produces torque. Uh, I would. And I do mean gentle application. Not I would do this in such a way as to not uh, create any disturbances to the planet at all. Um, we we would caution you only, our alchemist friend. Mm -hmm. We would caution you just only for this. Okay. Be aware that even doing so would only delay a process that has begun. And the weight and the shifting that is happening is a result of many things, not just a catastrophe in one place in the world, but exasperated by many other things. So we wouldn't say it wouldn't make any difference. We only say that it may only delay something. So be clear that that is what the earth wants before you attempt such a big endeavor. I will. Thank you. And make sure that it's not your 
wanting more than what is necessary. And, and we, we know you understand what we mean. Yes. There's I, a lot of, we will say to you, there is a lot of, of beings and people and energies on this planet all searching for a solution to something. They need to be in harmony or it will be like a push and pull playing a tug of war and not meaning to be, but everybody trying to find a quick solution. So ask for guidance so that you are actually asserting the right strategy as opposed to just this looks like what needs to be done. Ask for assistance and ask for guidance so that you are in harmony with the other beings and responsible beings will all be doing that and collectively it will it will have the biggest benefit then but if everyone is sort of one running off willy-nilly and thinking this needs to be done that needs to be done it can actually become ineffective or make things maybe even a little bit worse so yeah i understand i, I will just uh, continue with the uh cubes and uh we'll apply them as as stated previously i will not attempt this at this time i will go with the flow do you have do you have a network of people that you speak to that are moving in the same direction as you in this way about a handful they are within the group we would just say there are more people more beings more I know they're more ex non corporeal, yes. And but also very corporeal. Yes. Because this is a this this is a worldwide phenomenon and many people and beings are very focused on something. So Thank ask you. the earth what it wants. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna mute again. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Michelle, I believe you're next. I would like to let Chris go if he has a question. Chris. Great. Okay. If he's not, I will ask the question. Um, so I went to this yoga retreat, and I'm probably going to go back because now I will go alone and be able to be in my own energy and not others. Um, it's very interesting to me because it's the first time I've attended um, kind of a yoga retreat that in my estimation is cult, like a cult. The guru, kind of the people, what I noticed, this is not like an accusation. It is, you know, just what I witnessed. So they kind of devote their lives and their time and resources, et cetera, to this particular guru um, because he has the hookup with God, kind of like Catholicism, you know? Like, like this guy is so special that instead of praying directly to God and connecting directly, we need to use him as a vehicle to access that kind of... Uh, energy or what have you mm -hmm. um and, and it, it, it's not really any different than us sitting right here asking for information from you <laughs> as it were if we all had confidence in our uh, in who we really are you know, we would just be asking the universe for the answers and not another person um anyway I wanted, I, I had several conversations with people while I was there, and I think I'm going to go back. Um, and I think it, I, I don't know your take on this, but like to encourage people to know that they are God, you know, like we are the divine, we are spark of the divine, you know, and I don't need like, for instance, a man telling me, like a mediator, I have access directly. Um, 
what I just want to do to kind of talk on the topic of our own personal power, I suppose. Okay. Well, first we'd like, first to, we'd like to talk about a guru um, and what a guru yeah, is. That sounds good. A guru is the representation of the divine to his devotees or her devotees. And that is a perfectly valid and for many people, the, the path that they wish to walk. And yeah. seeing the divinity of a guru who does show the manifestation of higher knowing and who is walking in that godlike space is correct. There are many gurus on this planet that, that have devotees because a true guru is not very busy with much more than being a guru. And they need the devotees to feed them, clothe them, and to carry them around because most of the time they're only focused internally and on God and on communicating and giving information to their devotees. That is not for everyone. And it's definitely not that much of a Western mentality. It's very much Eastern. It's very much the Hindu, Buddhist. Do you think it's um, oh, mentality? What, what we want to say is there's nothing wrong with it and there's nothing that you need to tell those people mm -hmm. that they're doing. Mm -hmm. They know their God. Mm -hmm. They know, but that guru for them mm -hmm. has become their focus and they are in love right. with the divine as manifested within that guru. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's for you. Correct. And there are some not so honest gurus out yeah. there, but that almost doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So if it's not for you, then it's not for you, but it's a very valid thing. Okay. Mm. I forgot what the second part of that was. Oh, us owning our own power, I suppose. Stepping into well, our own you are, our you are, you are, and what you do very much is you look at other people and want them to conform to what you think <laughs> things should be. Musical emphasis. <laughs> and I don't know what if it would, should be that way. It just well, what you, you believe that it should be, because for for whatever reason, and it's okay that it's not for you, at least at this moment, and maybe never. It's not really within the Western mentality so much, though. As we become more integrated with other societies, mm -hmm. you'll see that more and more because there are more people from the East here. No, I think it's fine that they believe in whatever they believe. It's any path is better than no path. And but there's the, no judgment on that. Do you see the judgment there? Do you see it? You're giving them permission to walk their path. They don't need your permission. <laughs> really, 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 really right, see right. that. Okay. Their path is their path. Your path is your path. Yes. There's I no right or wrong that. path. Even if you're heading in what you believe to be absolutely the wrong direction, you're still on a path. It's still right. your path. You can never get off your path. And you definitely don't need to be walking the other people's path for them or telling them where their path is. They're on their path. They can't get off their path because it's yeah. their path. I get so, that. Also. But for me being in the presence of that kind of energy. I don't think it's, I think it's beautiful energy. The, the land is highly charged with this guru's energy. It, like it was immediately, immediately palpable to me. 
Mm -hmm. It's a very good experience. I've just never been exposed to it before. So it's kind of, it jangles my senses, I suppose. When you really have a true guru who's walking around, they are the divine in human form. They are. Okay. And they're more divine than everyone else. That's not true, but they are more immediately connected. There's less space between them and true oneness. They, they're walking manifestations of it. Uh -huh. They're not questioning their connection ever or trying to improve their connection. They're not uh -huh. trying to find their path or make sure they're on their path. They are the path. And what they become for the devotee is the path. The devotee guru connection is, is that. It's being able to see that divineness and connecting to oneness, the one. So when you do, or if you do have a guru, that's what it is. There's this idea in the West that we don't want that or we don't need that or it's somehow less than finding the God inside yourself. But if you're truly one with everything, there's nothing that's not inside you. There's nothing you're not connected to. So there's no better way or it's their way. It's a way. Okay. I'm it's pretty amazing to find a guru, to see one, to experience one, because you do see the difference in that being versus all the other ones around. Yeah. I have not experienced him in person. He is not there, but he's, you know, he, the retreat is his. Anyway, I'm going to let Christopher would like to ask a question. So I hear you and I will absorb that. Thank you. We Thank know you. you will, Michelle. Thank you. Hi, Tails. Hi, Chris. Thank you for allowing me to connect to you. Thank you for connecting. Well, thank you so much. Um, just a quick question, Tails. Um, I feel I'm making some progress um, with my channeling, channeling abilities at present um, with the help of my teacher, Angie, and she's in the room at present. Um, and um, yeah, over the last uh, few weeks, I feel I've basically taken her up a gear and uh, I feel quite confident. Um, I had some difficulties uh, with myself basically being in my way and I had um, yes difficulties getting out of the way really and um, but the last last few weeks there's been a slight shift in that and um, I'm beginning to notice and feel more confident within myself um, um, yes uh, allowing um, my friend uh, which is Ken and um, he comes to me in meditation and um, he's uh, he's basically um, there all the time um, so I just wanted to ask, um, um, how do you see me at present, please? We would just say to you that in the, the process of channeling, it is process, and you're finding that yourself, that the more you do it, the more you yourself can step out of the way. And when you're actually channeling a personality, your friend who comes to you in meditation. Kim, you said, or Kin? Kin, K-I-N. Ken. When Ken comes to you, you are having in some ways to step aside and let go of that control and that judgment of what you will be communicating. And that's only a process of practice and allowing so the more you do, the more that you trust that Kin's message is coming out. The more you trust Kin, 
directly that his message is a message you would like to convey, the more easily you will be able to do so and the more your partnership with that being will grow. It's a trust situation. And it's only because it's new and it's only something that has to be processed, practiced, we wish to say, not processed, but practiced. It's, it's just like anything because you're the tool that is being used by kin to communicate. Yes. And, it's, and you are like an instrument that he is learning to play, but you have to allow him to play you. Yeah. So as both of yeah. your expertise grows in that, it will become yeah. much easier. Yeah. It's not um, really that true of an analogy, but that's the best one we could come with at the moment. Yeah, thanks so much for the update. And um, just I was, I was, I, was, I played with fear an awful lot uh, throughout the process, and it's been going on now, and um, maybe say twelve months. Um, and um, um, Ken just started started to appear in my meditations until I had some sessions with different channels, and he brought about who Ken was and that. So there's plenty of communication happening on a daily basis between myself and my teacher, um, and and my confidence has definitely. Uh, is moving in the right direction um, and uh, that fear that um, yes would have um, that would have engulfed me uh, in the early stages and again I was just not only doubting Ken I was more doubting myself like you know that I wasn't actually able to complete this uh, task um, but no but as i said uh Teos, um, the last few weeks things have taken a slight shift because of the help of other energies also that has come in to um help me and lift me that's very good then just keep going and and we were just thinking about now versus even five years ago how many people are channeling and are embracing their own ability to access information and be open and it's an amazing amazing beautiful thing there's no shortage of channelers to be had and there's no shortage of information to be given so the confidence that you should have is whatever teachings you will bring are necessary and you will find the people who need to hear them so there's never a doubt that that is a true calling. Everyone has that has the calling has it for a reason. Thank you so much, Teos. You're welcome. And be, 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 well, just continue with, with what you're doing and, and you will see the growth of it. And you're thank on you. the right path. And thank you to your teacher for helping you to access that. And that continues also. Thanks so much. Do we have time for one more? We do. One more. Pete, you want to try and unmute? If you can't come through, we'll read your questions. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Hi, Theos. Hello, Pete. We can hear Hello. you. Um, first of all, I say finally. Um, also, I was what, my first question is based off um, of what I wrote. It's um, experiencing some feeling of some form of stress within myself to the point that I almost said to Archangel Michael to cut the cord of my spirituality in a sense and point where. I said, I realized that and I said, wait, hold on. Um, I was wondering what was happening to me at that point. Was I too exhausted? We would say yes. And also sometimes if your sensations are too much, you want to cut them off because you're not able to process them. So Archangel Michael can not really cut off your spirituality because you are spirit um, but he can filter for you input and sensation 
and we would say to you maybe to ask Archangel Michael, who's a very good one, or someone else who you feel that you would trust a guide to become a gatekeeper filter for you so that the energies and the sensations that are coming through to you maybe slow down a little bit so that you're not I, having to take it all in too much. I, I trust Archangel Gabriel because he always well, then comes ask to help Archangel me out. Archangel Gabriel to be your gatekeeper and do that through meditation and make the agreement that you only get what you can really handle and that that you are informed of anything if you want more or want less and, and open that communication to do that. But you are spirit, so it will be very hard to cut off your spirituality. So just remember, your spirit in a body. All right, thank you. Um, my second question was also written here was we have our eyes closed so we don't see what you're talking about yeah um i'm pretty sure um okay my first question would be for i'm um, wearing a dark prehend night um it when i first saw i saw the picture it felt like it was calling out to me to get this uh, gem um I use um, my use for it is for the use of Reiki healing, and was wondering of how to fully become a Reiki healer. Have you studied Reiki? Yes. All which, which levels have you done? Have you had all three activations? I had my own self attunement for that. You did it yourself or it was done by another one? For myself. Well, we would recommend first that you follow a Reiki course and work with a Reiki master, but it's not 100% necessary. You can do it yourself. But the thing to do to become really fully a Reiki healer is to practice Reiki on a daily basis or on a frequent basis so that you become very uh, astute at tapping into that energy and being open to letting that energy through, uh, flow through you. Are you practicing your Reiki? No. Um, certain points I do and certain points I don't uh, do it's to like an the... Instrument. It's an instrument. You're the instrument, truly, but it's a matter of practicing it with dedication and then you will become the master of Reiki or a Reiki master, really. It's practice. It's not someone zaps you with energy and boom, you're this healer. In fact, you're not a healer at all, and no one is. The energy is the universal energy. You're only the channel or the vessel through which it flows. So your job as someone who is doing Reiki is to be the best vessel you can be. But in order to do that, you have to do it. So we would say to you, practice, heal everything, whether it's a plant or a, the ground or your animal or yourself or your neighbor or anyone you can find, but do it daily. What is it that you want to do to when you become this full Reiki healer? I would like to help others um in the community or where i'm around with or because i always notice that people get upset or be sad and things like that and i always would like to you to help out with that well you can send love and energy all the time and you can do reiki all the time you're not necessarily going to stop people from being sad or upset because they're reacting to something within their world so they're choosing the reaction and sometimes it's sadness because it's sad or sometimes it's another thing. But what you can do is begin to practice Reiki and help to balance people who need it, who want that. And also work on balancing yourself. 
So we would say to you, practice Reiki. If there's a Reiki circle near you, you could join that and go and do Reiki. But we would really recommend you to follow some kind of course. Did you follow a book? Or are you doing sort of your own intuitive form of Reiki? I follow a guideline and principles. That came from? From Dr. Mikiao Yusui. Okay, the Yusui Reiki is the, he is the one that brought Reiki to the, to the world. So we would just say to you, follow your Reiki, do your Reiki. That's the way to become a Reiki healer is to do Reiki. There isn't a moment when someone comes and says, now you're a Reiki healer. You're a Reiki healer if you do Reiki. So follow your Reiki, do your Reiki, starting now, every day, okay. in some way, shape, or form. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, Theos, thank you for answering all our questions. Would you like to leave us with a final blessing? Of course. We would just say to you, and, and we've noticed a theme that has come from this day of conversation. And really, it's about reconnecting to the earth and finding out what does the earth want, what does the universe want, what does, and what is our way to serve that. So we would encourage everyone to take a time to go outside. Take a time to breathe the air, to feel the ground under your feet. When you drink the water, feel the energy of the water. When you breathe your air, when you feel the wind, acknowledge it. Thank you to the wind. Thank you to all of the elements so that you have that building connection. It's important to reconnect, to balance the planet, to balance our selves and in that awareness you will have so much more impulse of what needs to be done and how it needs to be done so our blessing to you is to know that you love know that you have the ability to connect and to take the steps to do it and we love you and we wish to empower you to stand on your own strengths and find your connection to all that is. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you very much. Are there other blessings in the room? I can do one if you like. Thank you, Michelle. I have a blessing. Go ahead. We he see a boro hosi ki ha. Wari he a bo hosi fi he a boro sio ho ha. Fria mana ha ko si a si a bara ho ha. Ko ho si a ha. Wari he a si a bo hoso toro hoso toro ya. Fi he a bara he a sa. 
Bria, Maia, Hakoso, Tosho, Toro, Yahataya. Blessings. Thank you. Any more? Well, with that, I think we'll conclude our broadcast. Karen, are you back with us? Well, I just want to thank you again for taking the time to uh, bring Theos to us and to remind people to check out hucolo.org for upcoming webinars. And thank everybody for participating in this webinar. Have a wonderful day. Blessings and namaste to all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Blessings to you. Namaste. Thank you, thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. Sorry, I muted my mic. I didn't. I couldn't find them. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, thank, thank you. you for taking the time and bearing with us as we dealt with the video glitch. I appreciate oh. your uh, perseverance. Yes. Okay, we are now off the air. <laughs>